Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Amber Valley series. There are 35 parishes in this beautiful slice of eastern Derbyshire. Here's one for your viewing pleasure. Welcome back to Amber Valley once again, everybody. Now, this one is one I'm not going to enjoy for one particular reason and that is to get to here I've had to drive up out of Derby up a steep hill and I've got to walk up part of that steep hill on this route so fingers crossed I make it round in one piece. <laughs> Welcome to Quandon. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to a village which gives us a channel first. Never before have we covered a place that begins with the letter Q. This is Quandon, a linear village in the south of the Amber Valley district of Derbyshire. It's spread along four minor upland roads, approximately one mile north of the Derby suburb of Alice Tree. Two of those roads lead towards the city. There are several theories as to the village's name. The first part, Quorn, is disputed. There are three ideas for this. One says it's an old English word for a hand mill which ground corn. Another says it's a Welsh word meaning down or more. And a third suggests it comes from a local tribe called the Cornovi. Whatever the case, nobody can dispute the second element, Don, because as we already know, that means hill. And trust me, it makes perfect sense too, because there are plenty of hills around here. Quandon has been settled since at least the 9th century. It has lots of links to neighbouring Kettleston and the Curzon family who resided at Kettleston Hall. The Curzons, also known as the Viscount Scarsdale, were responsible for the construction of the village hall, the founding of the local school and the installation of the Millennium Topograph on Bunkers Hill. In short, it's a hilltop village sprinkled with history everywhere you look and complementing it all are wonderful vistas over the city of Derby. Let's go walking folks! We begin our route around Quandon on Burley Lane, one of the four minor roads the village is based on. The vast majority of the village's buildings are residential, and Burley Lane has some pretty sizeable ones. In fact, this whole area of the village made me feel a little bit out of place. Parts of Quandon are very high end. Here's the black cottage at number two Woodlands Lane, which sports four and a half inch thick pitched black walls. We'll be back to that later as it's quite the historic building. For now, we're ambling down Woodlands Lane. You might have already noticed that neither this nor Burley Lane have footpaths. These were both once minor upland roads. As a result, they were never designed for them and none have ever been added. Be careful up here of passing traffic. So up to now, no real landmarks of note, but as you can see behind me, that's all just about to change because we have a water tower, which we've been slowly ambling towards. I've been seeing it in the distance. And there we are, the water tower here in Quandon. The 
The water tower can be seen clearly from a footpath off Woodlands Lane, which leads south through some fields. Out here you're treated to some corking views because you're on a hillside. Here's what you see to the right, and here's what you see to the left. However, the best is still to come as the path reaches a brow. From here you can see most of the city of Derby. I was able to pick out the university amongst some other buildings. Even if you turn around, you still get a good view back to where you came from. The water tower is still visible too. A right turn where two paths cross takes you back into the village via a gate in a small patch of woodland. This runs through a small field around the back of Barn Close, joining Church Road just north of the Joiners Arms. So aside from the views we've just seen, there was a point to walking down that footpath. It's because it's brought us to the bottom, well, halfway down the hill. And now I've got to trudge all the way back up so that I didn't miss anything on the main street, you see. Whew, this bit's going to be difficult. A stone bus shelter next, Quandon has no bus service these days as far as I'm aware, at least not from here. Next we're going into this street, Barn Close, which is a dead end, but the local children will know this area well. That's because at the end there's a recreation ground which has play equipment and a football pitch or two. Back to Church Road again now, where once again we have more grand housing on both sides of the street. It's at this point we start to climb. You can see from this shot here just how steep this hill is. It's not easy work. Corndon's elevations are very varied. The highest point of the village is 144 metres above sea level and the lowest is 75. Some famous names have lived here and dealt with these hills, including Sir Henry Royce and Brian Clough. Okay, we're almost at the summit of the hill, thankfully. <laughs> it is quite a steep hill. You don't realise how steep it actually is until you walk it. Driving up it in the car is a different uh, matter altogether. Okay, so you can see the church spire over there. That is what we're heading for. Next we have a small garden with some really pretty flowers. It's good to see the locals' floral skills on display. This structure is a human sundial. If you stand with your heel on the current month, your shadow will tell you the time. A former Wesleyan chapel next, built in 1859. In 1958 this became a shop and a post office and a private house in 1997. Curzon Primary School next. Built in 1967, it replaced an original 1859 school founded by the Reverend Alfred Curzon. He also had a hand in the building of St Paul's Church. This relatively modern church was completed in 1874. It cost £4,000 to build, a quarter of which was from the Reverend's own pocket. He also donated the land it stands on. The rest was raised by villagers. Its clock was installed in 1897 to mark Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. Do you know, I haven't been able to get into a single church yet today, and I'm not going to be able to get into this one. I haven't tried the door, but I daren't try the door. And this is why there's a sign on the door that says, this church now has an alarm. Do not enter unless you know how to deactivate it. I think I'm going to steer well clear. In the grounds of St Paul's is the village cenotaph. There's also a Roll of Honour tablet inside the church. Next, it's the village hall. This was built by the Curzon family in 1914. It's been extended twice in 1965 and 2004. The phone box can be found here too. This one has been turned into a book exchange. Looking pretty good. Quandon has an amateur dramatic society which has been performing plays in the village hall since 1941. 
On its wall, there's a map of the village with loads of information about it. I took plenty of photos of this. There's also a parish notice board on the wall, so mark off Quandon, everyone. Amber Valley is down to 25. On the corner opposite is number 226 Burley Lane. It might look like a normal house, but you'd be wrong to assume that. It was the site of the village pinfold. One of its walls remain today, but the adjoining cottage has since been rebuilt. Well, make no mistake about it, that information board outside the village hall is extremely thorough. It goes through virtually everything, a lot more than I thought Quandon had. I can't cover it all because it's all spread out all over the place. One thing it did mention was the cricket club. We're going to take a drive to that later and I'll finish this episode there. As far as the walk goes, I've only got a couple more things I'm really interested in. There's a cottage of note just a bit further up and then we'll end the walk at the Millennium Topograph. If you were to follow Burley Lane out of Quandon, you'd pass the site of Burley Hill Pottery. It produced pottery between 1250 and 1375. The site was later used in World War II for testing the Cromwell tank. Here's the Black Cottage again. Sweets, parking and cigarettes used to be sold from a shed in its garden. Hikers could also refill their billy cans there too. Almost directly opposite is a street called Montpellier. Just like Burley Lane, Montpellier has a plethora of high-end properties, a mixture of houses and bungalows. Montpellier is a dead end, but eventually becomes a footpath. This offers more great views to the north. It runs towards Bunkers Hill viewpoint. Towards the end of the path, it becomes permissive as opposed to public. The land here is owned by the Kedleston estate, and as such, you must adhere to their rules and stick to the path. On the hill stands the Millennium Topograph, a massive lump of Derbyshire gritstone. It's been here since 2001. Its creation was funded by the will of Francis Curzon, the third Viscount Scarsdale. It shows details of 50 nearby places. Folks, let me tell you, this is some view. It is well worth the trek up to Bunkers Hill to get a view like this. This is unbelievable. This is Derbyshire at its finest and that's three times I've said that in this series now. It's amazing. The Quandon Millennium Topograph. If you see it on the map and you know how to get there, I promise you you won't be disappointed if you make the effort to come up here and look. Amazing. Beautiful. So as I promised earlier, Quandon Cricket Club will finish this episode off. Here we are. It's on the road towards Kettleston or one of the roads towards Kettleston because there's plenty of those. There you go, there's the cricket club right there. I can't go any further in than this because there's a big sign on the gate that says private property. I don't want to go much further in case anyone sees me or whatever. And uh, even though I'm perfectly legal standing here, um, you know, I don't want anyone to, to question me too much, to be honest with you. So yeah, there you go. That's been the parish of Quandon, and I do hope you've enjoyed it. Now, aside from what I've shown you, Quandon has a few other interesting bits. First of all, the Joiner's Arms, which you may have seen in today's drive-in. Its name originates from the skilled craftsmen who frequented it when they were building Kettleston Hall in the 1760s. It became Quandon's industrial hub in the 19th century. There's also a former chapel not too far from the pub. Only the tower now remains, and it's covered in ivy. You'd do well to know it was even there. The nave and the chancel were demolished in 1874, the same year that it closed, and the new church was opened next to the school. And lastly, the Chalybeat Spring. This was also seen in the drive-in. At one time, this attracted people from far and wide because its water was said to have healing properties. It was even once visited by the author Daniel Defoe. The stonework is 17th century. 
An earthquake caused the spa to drop to a trickle in 1868, and it stopped altogether in 1897. That's it for Quandon, everyone. Time for me to hit the road and leave this pretty little hilltop village behind. Next week, we'll be back in Amber Valley again to explore another of its fabulous villages, but as yet, I don't know which one. Join me in seven days' time to find out which one I chose. See you later! Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out. <laughs>